So last time we built this shower frame, which Tim is currently modelling very nicely. Right? Thank you. <laughs> this time we're going to be carrying on with it and doing all of the waterproofing. So hopefully, if we do this right, by the end it should be a really nice watertight space. Can't wait. So this is our shower, or the frame for it anyway, and crucially we wanted it to be tall enough so that I can stand up in it, which as you can see I can and I'm just over six foot, about six foot one, so that is actually pretty good. We've also got this area here which is for our filters because we're building a recirculating shower. That will be coming a little bit later when we plumb all that in, but for now we've just got to make this space nice and watertight. So this is our very hefty tanking kit which we're going to be using as the first layer of waterproofing for inside the shower. However, before we do that we're going to have to figure out where our drain hole is going to be and then cut that as well because once that's cut then the waterproofing will go around that. So that is our first job <laughs> which I'm not really looking forward to. Yeah, it's never fun <laughs> when you've got to cut a hole right through the van, is it? <laughs> so to try and find a good spot for the drain we're going to do the trick we did for our diesel heater. Basically we've got two quite powerful magnets and it turns out that they're actually strong enough so we can feel force field from the underside through to the inside of the van, so let's give that a go. But there's actually really quite limited places where we can do it. Um, so one option that might be is about there. If you can find that one on the inside, Abby. Yeah, right near the door. Okay. Any other spot is this bit here, which is quite nice because it's really flat. So that is about there. Yeah, I think that's the better place because the other place was here somewhere, like that. So we're going to have a um, composting toilet which is going to fit in this area when we're not using the shower. And so using the toilet there, if the drain was there, would be a bit irritating. So I think over here is probably our best bet. So with the drain, this is what it will look like about there. It's pretty good to me. I think it's pretty good. It took us a little while to find this drain because it has to be long enough to go through all the layers of our floor. So I think this one's about eight centimetres. So this will go through the floor and then on the other side, on the bottom of the van, this has a thread on it so it can just screw on like that and just create a nice sandwich between all of them. So it should make it nice and tight. <laughs> A lot quicker than we did the whole of the diesel heater. So we've been doing a few experiments on some scrap plywood because what we want to do is recess the drain a little bit so that when it goes in, just like in a shower tray, it's going to sit slightly lower than everything so that water will run and drain nicely in there and it will be quite easy to just you know at the end of the shower just to sweep water in there and we're going to have some wet room flooring which is going to tuck under there the tricky part for us is that we have to be able to create this pattern this circle which has got this little chamfered edge in the shower very rudimentary routing template. <laughs> so the idea is we're going to now cut out just that lip essentially. So I've set the depth stop on this so it should just carve out a nice ring and this little bush is just basically going to follow the edge. So we should be left with a nice inset. Okay ready? Yeah. As much as we can go, it's almost the whole circle. See, basically our router is just a bit too big. And uh, annoyingly, if we had done the hole about a tiny bit that way, which we could have done, uh, it would have worked. So we just got to cut out that bit now. Never mind. Too bad. 
So we put some expanding foam down just to seal any gaps in all the layers of the floor and it has definitely expanded. So we've just got to cut or maybe even just break this off now. Okay. Nice. Might just make it a bit wider, but that's looking pretty good. Right, that's a bit bigger now, so I don't think that's much better. Okay, so now that we've done the recess for the drain, we can actually get on with our tanking. So, we open it up, see what we've got. Basically, we have to do it in three stages. So the first stage is the priming stage, so that just paints on with a brush. That's just in that little bottle in there. And then after that, we've got to tape all the joints everywhere with tanking tape, and that includes around the a bit of a membrane over the drain as well. Um, and then once the tape is on, then we paint on the actual tanking membrane as well after that. So get on with the primer first, and that just that should be easy enough, I think. Get it on. Are you going to be nervous to actually test it? What if we pour water in it and it just starts coming out of the no, edges of the shower? just don't even go there. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Always a chicken here at the moment. Hey! So this layer removes, you put it onto the porous surfaces, I think it takes some of the porosity, if that's a word, out of it so that the tanking membrane will go on better. So yeah, and it starts to change colour as well, so it's quite good because you're going to see what you've done. There we go. I think that's our first layer done, so we'll leave that to dry, come do a second layer. What's quite nice is it only actually takes one hour to dry. And we've got good weather and temperature for yeah, once. Probably the bottom is already dry, we could just start again now. It's like painting <laughs> the fourth fridge or something. I need a drink. That is the second coat of the primer. Pretty much finished now. Yeah. It's got a bit late in the day, so we're going to leave it there for today and carry on tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> Isn't it really nice to actually be doing something where you're just following instructions for once? There's no thinking involved. <laughs> yeah. Right. Literally, nice. just step one, two, three, and you've got a waterproof shower room. Good morning. Morning. So it is the next day and everything is dry. So we are ready for waterproofing step two, which is this tanking tape. So this is going to go around all of the edges and seams and because of the way we did our shower construction we had to use up the leftover bits of ply from a wall so we've actually got quite a lot of seams so we're probably going to be doing a bit more tape than you would normally do. Yeah, I can do that now hopefully it's not going to take too long this part but we'll see. floor all done. Took a bit of time to try and figure out good technique didn't it? Yeah, this uh, roller thing is rubbish that came with the kit so we're just using it without the roller. <laughs> <laughs> I think it broke on the third strip didn't it? Yeah. We're doing it from the bottom first so that any overlapping joins from water running down it will overlap and kind of make its way down into the bottom of the tray. It can stretch a little bit but you don't want to do it too much otherwise it will just weaken it so. You also want to be careful that not sticking it onto itself. Yeah, yeah, it never, <laughs> never comes apart if you do that. It doesn't help that our shower has loads of really awkward shapes <laughs> and corners everywhere. <laughs> Wrapping a really complicated present. Yeah, it's <laughs> tricky. Nice work. Albie is definitely much better at this than me. It's another job that she's a lot better at. I just keep getting the tape stuck to itself. It's 
So we're only really just <laughs> at this stage at the moment and uh, we've already run out of tape. Now, we did think in advance and we got another roll of 10 metres. <laughs> we're wondering if even that will be enough. It's ridiculous. They're because... quite skimpy on the tape, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. I mean, our shower's a bit weird, but you would always have four corners going up, basically. It's not done much. You know, you're going to have about two metres height, so you already need eight metres before yeah. you've really done anything. Oh well. So that is the last bit going in for today because we have actually run out of tape again. It's ridiculous. We were thinking of doubling up or halving, I should say, the tape and doing it for these ones. Uh, we would have, still wouldn't have had enough because of those alcoves we got. I mean, you might look at this and think it's overkill, but it's better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? So we really don't want it to leak, do we? No. Can that go anywhere? That's the last bit. <laughs> So we have decided to bring the van up to Scotland just for a few days and uh, we've just had a nice walk through the Glendale Forest and we're just about to walk through the Corrie Fee and hopefully to that waterfall all the way over there. It's such a nice hot day as well. It is beautiful, like apparently a heatwave across country. 28 here today yeah. and 40 potentially down south. Fun? Yeah. Hot? Hot work. <laughs> So it's another day, but now we have some more tape and carry on, and this time we should definitely have enough to actually finish it. tape done and we've also added a bit more around the tap area where we know the taps are going to come through. Don't know exactly where they are yet which is why we've done two layers there and they also give you this drain mat which uh, is designed to cover the drain and basically it's just exactly the same stuff as the tape um, just in a nice larger piece and all this stuff is anyway is just beautiful tape with uh, a fleece lining on it so it's the same kind of beautiful tape stuff that we've used on like the waterproofing on the outside of the van and because it's got the fleece on it it doesn't stick to your hand which is good but yeah so we're just going to put a piece there and then we've got a few other places we know we're going to have uh, things coming through so we're going to have a pipe coming through for our composting toilet hopefully around here and also a vent for our diesel heater which is going to vent into the shower here so we're just going to add a bit more of that and, uh, and then that's basically it Did you just get scared by a chicken? Yeah. Bye! to the last stage of our tanking which is the tanking membrane so it's painting on like blue rubbery kind of stuff and we're going to do two layers of that one with horizontal stripes and one with vertical ones so we'll just get started with the first layer now it's like a cauldron that's oddly quite mesmerizing to watch <laughs> it feels a bit 
bit like gloopy paint. It's quite, it spreads nicely. Looks like it's got good coverage. Yeah. I don't think we're going to run out of this one, do you think? Well, I hope not. <laughs> It's hard to know how much to do, but it says by the end it should be quite a thick layer, at least one millimetre. So we figured, because we've got quite a lot, um, might as well be fairly liberal with our application. It's quite fun to work with as well, because it spreads quite easily and also it doesn't really drip too much. So you can get quite a big gloop of this stuff and just kind of whack it on there. Nice. And you can see where it's also drying, it's starting to change colour a little bit as we're going. Okay, so that is the first layer all done now. It's taken a little while, it's now 10 o'clock at night, so um, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Let it dry for 12 hours overnight and then by the morning it should be ready for the second layer. It's quite tiring. <laughs> So it's the next morning, we've come out and it's dry mostly everywhere but in the corners it's still a little bit wet so I think I'm just going to leave it to dry just for a little bit longer and in the meantime get on with another job. Let's do that little cladding instead. Yeah, so we're going to just finish the cladding up here. We've already done the ones coming up the side here. Hopefully that'll look nice. We couldn't do that before because we didn't know where it was going to come up to because the shower wasn't built yet. Yeah. Now we can. Woohoo! We've got the heater on in the van at the moment on full blast to try and dry out the wet room packing stuff. So while we're doing that, we also are thinking it's actually quite loud. We've been trying to figure out how we can quieten this down a bit from outside. And we think it's the air intake side that's actually a bit loud. And there's a silencer on the exhaust side, but not on the air intake side. So what we thought we'd try is we've just bought another exhaust muffler on eBay, which was £5 delivered. And we figure if we put this on the air intake side, it might actually quieten this down. So see if it works. So just loosen that Jubilee clip, so we'll take this off, then see if this works. Wow. So that's pretty good. It's a lot quieter, isn't it? It's quite a big difference, isn't it? Nice. And then obviously we can just put this back on the end of that. It's a pretty good £5 investment, I think. <laughs> Cool, so there we go, that's the new silencer in line in the air intake pipe. And we just actually extended this pipe a little bit so that we could cable tie it in these holes which were conveniently on this side. So yeah, all done and a lot quieter. Hopefully it'll keep our neighbours when we're parked up a little bit happier. Now we're just going to figure out a way to maybe make the pump a bit quieter as well. tiny piece that's just fitting under there. Another tiny piece. Yeah. Just for completeness really. Something like that. Just makes it look a bit neater. This is the rudimentary jerry-rigged drying setup we've got. The whole van is 32 degrees and in here it is nice and warm, isn't it? I think that's done the trick. Nice. Yeah, it's dry everywhere now. Gives you a bit of a taste of what it'll be like because we are going to have the heater venting into the shower as well. So it's going to be a nice drying room. Hopefully it should dry itself out pretty quickly and also be able to dry clothes and towels and things. Yeah, it's an idea, isn't it? Right, next layer. Mm -hmm. 
So it's the morning after we've done the second coat and it is looking nice and dry now but we're starting to think it might be a little bit patchy in places so we're just maybe thinking of doing one extra layer just to be on the safe side. We tried to put it on pretty thick but where the where it's brushed out it's gone a bit thinner in places so it does look like one more could just be a good idea right? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Better safe than sorry. Yeah exactly. Just means we've got to wait another 12 hours for it to dry again <laughs> before we can do anything. So that third layer is all really dry now and pretty happy we went for the extra layer in the end because it's looking pretty good, pretty happy with that. It's a lot bluer. Yeah, looks good. So what we're going to do now is to just smooth some sealant around the inside of our drain hole. Um, we're going to do that mostly just to protect the layers of the floor that are going through. Shouldn't really get any water down there obviously because it's going to come through the actual drain that we've bought but just to be on the safe side and just smooth it out and make sure it's still thin enough for the drain to actually still fit in there. <laughs> Before we put the PVC up we thought we might just do a little water test with the hose. Just a good opportunity to see if there are any problems. Of course, the one thing that's interesting is we are parked on a ridiculous slope at the moment oh, so yeah. it's definitely not really going to go down the drain properly. <laughs> Ready? Well, we have water in the shower. Oh, can you hear that drain noise? <laughs> <laughs> that's quite satisfying. <laughs> trying to avoid water in the vat. <laughs> it's like pouring it all over it. And there is nothing coming out the edges, which is yeah, pretty good. So on this slope we're at now, which is pretty angled, that's how much water is pulled in the bottom. Okay, so we've moved the van to the most level spot we can get it to around here, which is tricky because it slopes everywhere. Try again. So the PVC layer we're about to put in, and also the outer flooring, should make a watertight seal anyway. But it's quite nice to know that underneath, obviously, it's still watertight just from the tanking kit. So pretty good. And this should also be flex resistant. So as we're moving down the road, all the vibrations and things, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, it'll stay watertight and we won't have water starting to come into the van. I'm quite happy about that. Yeah, I am. I think the test is a success. A lot more satisfying the first time we tested the window. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit <laughs> traumatic, wasn't it? Glad we don't have to do this tanking again. <laughs> So that's all for this video. Catch us in the next one where we'll be making it look a lot more like a shower. See you then.